Hello, Claire Kennedy here and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at photo transfers. There are lots of other ways of incorporating your photography into your painting. Some examples of this would be um, monoprinting using the gel plate, which is great fun and it's uh, quite popular at the moment, or printing on and then collaging using tissue paper, or a technique which I use quite a lot, which is digitally printing directly on top of your painting. It's also the technique which I'm in the middle of creating an online course about. So if you are waiting for that, then thank you for your patience. It will be ready very soon. I'm just in the middle of editing it at the moment. And if this sounds interesting to you, um, you can sign up to my newsletter, which is in the description below. But today we're going to look at, I think, the easiest and probably the most satisfying way of adding your photography to your painting, which is by creating a photo transfer. All you need for that is a laser copy or a photocopy of your photographic element and some acrylic medium and you're all set to go. Let's have a look. So here I have my laser copy of my photograph. For this technique it needs to be a laser copy or, or a photocopy would work too. The reason for this is because with a laser copy the toner sits on the surface of the paper allowing it to be released when making a transfer. The reason that inkjet copies don't work so well is because ink from an inkjet printer absorbs into the fibres of the paper, which makes it much more difficult for it to be released and transferred. Also for this technique, a highly contrasted photograph works best. Lots of nice deep blacks and some nice white, white open spaces too. Um, these were flowers which I just photographed with my iPhone on a white background. I then adjusted the brightness and the contrast until I was happy. I'm going to be transferring onto this, which is a wooden panel, and I've already applied a few layers of paint here. And this is what I'm going to use to make the transfer. It's acrylic medium. This one happens to be gloss, but matte works too. Acrylic medium is basically acrylic paint, but without the pigment. It, it reminds me a bit of school glue. It, it's white, but it dries clear and it just washes with, with soap and water. So let's give it a go. I have to make sure that your paint is completely dry. And I'm going to put, I want quite a lot, but I don't want it to be swimming in it. But I want some nice, even coverage. I think I've actually put a bit too much on here. I'm just going to wipe my brush. You have to work quite fast because acrylic medium does dry pretty quickly. Now I'm just going to lay this down on top like this. And you want to, to rub it down nicely to try and avoid air bubbles if you can. You can use an old credit card for this. But just be careful to not get any of the acrylic medium on the on the back here. So nice and gentle. I might have got a little bit on it there. The thing about transferring, which is a bit different from some of the other methods that I use for incorporating photography into my paintings, the thing about transferring is it's sometimes a bit imperfect. You have to embrace that. Um, there are other methods which are a bit more um, perfect and a bit more crisp, but I quite like the weathered look of a transfer. Okay, so I think that's pretty nicely stuck down. Let's get a wee burnish. A little air bubble there. And now we're just going to leave that to, to dry completely. And I would say leave it at least a couple of hours just to be absolutely sure. So I know I said leave it for a couple of hours, but I've actually gone against my own advice because it's now only about 10 minutes later or something. I was too impatient and I wanted to finish this video. So I used a hairdryer to speed things up. I may regret that, 
we shall soon see. So what you need at this point is a tub of water or a spray bottle would do as well. And I like to use a sponge like this. And you're just going to wet the back. I really hope this is properly dry. <laughs> I'm going to wet the back. And then start with your finger, just tentatively to begin with, just with circular movements like this. You're going to just lift the fibers of paper away. wetting it if it starts to feel a bit dry. And then slowly you can just start to see your photograph emerging. I always love seeing that. It's a bit like you know, it's emerging through the fog and becomes visible. Just wipe your fibres away like that. And really, you're just going to continue with this. until all the fibres have been lifted. So it's coming along quite nicely now. The reason why I like using a sponge like this is because in these areas where it's just really blank paper, you can be quite, you can be a bit rougher in getting the fibres away because you're not worrying about the, the ink underneath. And you can really scrub at it like this. A bit more careful when you're actually going around your photographic element because if you scrub too hard I'll show you here if you scrub too hard with something like this then you can see start to scrub the ink off as well so you just have to it's just really trial and error you, you, you can see when you're when you're scrubbing too hard you'll, you'll see pretty quickly So it's looking pretty good. I can still see some fibres coming up here though. You have to just really continue doing this until you don't see any more fibres coming up. Well, I think this is looking pretty good. There doesn't seem to be much more in the way of fibres coming up. So now you're going to leave this to dry, but I'm going to 
dry it with a hair dryer just to show you what it does look like when it dries. Now, this is actually not too bad, but normally after it dries, it's just total disappointment because you think you've lifted all the fibers, but after it's dried, you're left with, you're quite often left with a, a white fuzz over, over everything, and you, there is a little bit of it there and here, but sometimes the whole thing's covered with fuzz, and it's, it's what puts people off transferring because sometimes it, it just doesn't look so professional, but there's actually a wee trick to deal with this, which is very easy. So you make sure it's dry, and it has, you know, I can see it's lost its crispness a little bit. So remember this, your gloss medium, you're just going to put another layer of this over the top. And that fuzz just magically disappears and you're left with a lovely crisp image. And the medium also acts as an isolation coat. So you can just continue with your painting and everything's set. And what I think I might do here actually is make an opaque glaze and maybe push some of those flowers back. And then I think what my plan is for this painting is to then add some more transfers on top. So I've got these larger flowers, which I'm going to layer on top to give it a bit of depth. And that's what I really love about transferring. You can do it at any part of the process, and then you might want to partially conceal them and then continue painting. And it just really becomes part of your layering process. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Any questions, just ask in the comments. And for more painting and photography tips, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.